What's up, what's up, you guys? Girl G here. Welcome back to my channel. I am knocking these videos out, okay? I'm trying to get everything done so I can go ahead and watch Real Housewives of Atlanta. I heard it was a doozy, okay? Um, But y'all, we have a new show on the roster. Finally, it is here. Love and Marriage DC. Good old Monique said, you know what? I'm gonna leave that other show and I'm gonna come over here and try and you know allow me to reintroduce myself okay and that's what she's giving uh you know she basically was like you know i was put in a box on the other show and you know at least here you get to see the full capacity of you know monique sam monique and chris samuels basically so she wants to show everybody the type of woman that she is and you know see her as a mother an entrepreneur a wife and everything love and marriage definitely is one of those things like do not come on if you're not ready to address all the issues in your marriage like i hope none of y'all came out here hoping to give real tisha based of you know well why are you talking about it because bitch you came on the show like i'm hoping later on like that's not what it's giving um from the preview and from the trailer you know, it looks like they're going to be a little more open than we see um, on Love and Marriage Huntsville. But we'll see. We'll see. As of right now, the first episode was like, yang, yang, yang. It was cute, as you know. It gave us just enough to know what's going on in each of these couples, you know, lives. But the, you know, the big kaboom is going to come up later. Uh, so, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. If you're new to my channel, I appreciate you for tuning in. Go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe. Y'all know what to do. Become a member of the Juice Box crew. Okay. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and get started. We see good old fine-ass Monique Samuels walk out with her with her furs, okay, fur down to the boots. Um, and Monique never has a problem with dressing. Her style is always typically on point. Monique know what to do, okay? She steps out and basically was like, you know, look at me, you know, this is the new me. Uh, we're not, <laughs> we not going to talk about me beating some bitch's ass on that other show. <laughs> um so yeah i love her locks when she does the dreads the locks the braids super cute um but yes yeah, so she steps out and she's going to the not for lazy moms um little pop-up that she's doing so she has a girl named winter i feel like i'm going to like winter i feel like i am like i feel like there's a bluntness about her that i can appreciate um but we'll see but nonetheless, she's in there with Winter as her special guest. And then we get introduced to all the ladies. We have Miss Serena, who's married to Jamie. And then we also have Ashley, who's married uh, to DJ Quicksilver. You know, Roll Renown, he does. You know, we know DJ, Quicks uh, DJ Quicksilver. Um, so they all come and, uh, you know, Monique is explaining to them and everything. It's about, about, about the special guest. Ashley, I mean, Winter, getting ready to talk about her life and you know Monique's like you know what's what's uh gone on in her life I really feel like everybody's gonna resonate with it because she's you know overcome so much so I'm like what's this bitch story then what's her story gonna be then what is what's popping off with Miss Winter okay with the whole you know shaved side of her head at, at shoe Miss Arena she clocked it real fast she was like girl anytime somebody anytime a woman does something drastic with her head with going on with her life that's the first thing people think when a bitch starts touching her head it's like girl what you going through like what's popping off of your life that got you scratched down boots okay um but as of right now like i said as of right now i'm i'm kind of feeling okay with everybody um so um monique goes up there she's talking and winter goes up there and reveals that her and monique know each other through her ex who played football with Chris and she was like well in my first marriage you know I come to find out that my husband was having an affair with the nanny <laughs> bitch strike one found out he had another baby <laughs> strike two um and um oh he had two outside babies two 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 wish a nickel would two it makes me think of Rashida because like Rashida accepted that outside baby a lot of you women is out here doing that like I personally could not um 
And I know it's easy, especially in that lifestyle, when you have such a grandiose lifestyle being presented to you. But at some point, that dignity got to kick in, that morality got to kick in, that just like my, my self-respect, like that's in there, deep in there, like that's got to kick in. And it's like, two babies, my nigga, two? Oh, hell no, nah. pack that shit and go. Um, and Ashley and Arena, they were sitting down and she being all kind of little sneaky, sneaky with the, oh my God, you know, I was drinking because, you know, if it was going to be boring, girl, I'm on my fourth drinking. Like, it was definitely giving real, you know, Regina George, real mean girl-ish. But when Sir Monique get done off the stage and they talk to the girls and um, they're basically asking, like, girl, what's the tea? Like, what's going on in your life? And she was like, well, shit, you know, I moved on. Now she got a second husband. We kind of come to find out later in the episode that Nick damn near 60 or he was getting ready to turn 60. So I'm like, ooh, Winter, are you one of them? Bitch, are you one of them? Like, okay, look, don't hate the play, hate the game. That's what I'm. That's what I'm starting to feel about winter. Okay, spring, summer, fall. Shout out to shout out to Sheree. Um, but yes, yeah, so Arena starts talking about her uh, her anniversary party. She's inviting on the ladies. Monique's like, shit, y'all got something custom made. And she's like, yeah, girl, we coming up on 26 years. And of course, everybody's like, 26 years? Like, damn, girl, how you do it? We want tips. Everybody wants to talk to the couple with the, you know, the number of years because it seems like, oh, shit, you know, y'all must got the secrets. And let me tell you, let me tell you, most times, nine times out of ten, the reason they're together is for so long is because a woman is putting up with a lot of bullshit. Okay? It's ingrained. It's indoctrined. And the patriarchy, we get it, okay? Let's ask how many times Big Jamie went out there and stuck his dick in somebody else. Hmm? 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 Guarantee you more than once with them 26 years, okay? And I'm hoping, uh, Miss Arena, when his ass was going out the front door, bitch, you was going out the back, okay? Because at some point, ladies, at some point, there's going to have to be a, a, a stoppage, a halt, to the complaining of your nigga doing you dirty if you still gonna stay, right? So it's either I'm gonna accept his behavior and understand that's what comes with being in this lifestyle or you gonna shut up and start having your own on the side, okay? And I'm a proponent, I'm an advocate for what he do, bitch, you do too, okay? You ain't gonna get all the efforts out of me and reap the rewards out of me and you still go out there and do you, uh -huh, and be like, Gia? Hey, guy, is it Gia or Gia? I think she go by Gia with DJ Envy. You DJs out here ain't dropping no good dick, okay? And DJ Quicksilver, um, <laughs> you might know how to eat a good cookie, nom, 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 nom. okay? But uh, are you really dropping D is the question. Because if we ask, has she been faking? I'm sure she would, you know, be leaning more on the, oh, I've been faking it side if you ask me. Um, You know, he got the perfect height to be up in between them legs and dive in if you want to dive in if you will <laughs> uh but yeah so ashley starts joking about girl you know 26 years um you know what you need to do she's like girl wake him up like this and she bending over and everything and Lorena's like well she like i've been with him this long what you think i've been doing and she's thinking about a gift and she's like what should i get him like hell he has everything um and of course i am a proponent of like trips you know something that's an experience gifts yeah you know it's cool, but like, what can we remember out of everything? Um, and Monique's like, girl, we want a Q and A. And girl, she like, we want to dance, we want to party. Like, a Q and A for what? Like, no. <laughs> Plus, if you gotta do a Q and A, that means they gotta reveal they sh and they don't want to do that. At least not yet. Um, and so yeah, basically, it was just like all them talking about the anniversary party. So we moved to Monique. You know, we get into her and Chris's life. You know. Chris working out, Redskins, all that type of stuff, you know, Hall of Famer, Super Bowl, yada, yada, yada. We know the rundown. And he's in there working out, and Monique is just talking about, girl, like, 10 years has been a struggle. You know, me and Chris are in this awkward spot of basically, like, reevaluation. And a lot of couples typically, you know, every kind of, like, you know, three-year, five-year, 10-year, 12-year, 15-year mark, there's always, like, kind of this reevaluation because people – need to understand you're not marrying one person like people evolve and change you constantly have to decide like am i marrying if i'm am i going to continue to marry this person you know that they are evolving into every you know year because people are going to need to change for the better or for the worse 
and you decide where you're going to stay with them. And at this point, Chris is throwing the, I'm a good man out there. You know, I ain't got no babies coming to the door. I ain't got no bitches saying, you know, knock, knock. Y'all know, y'all know my favorite from Bernie Mac. Ding dong, baby. <laughs> ain't nobody coming to the door talking about ding dong, baby. Um, and it's definitely like giving because I, uh, present, I, I have this lifestyle because I, you know, as he said, I pay the bills and you know, I, you know, I, I supportive financially, basically. He feels like I'm a good man and you know he understands that there's things that he has to work on but he's not really giving the effort into working on those things because he feels like oh shit I already do enough because I help with the kids you know I help put the kids to bed I help bathe the kids and it's like you niggas who do that it's like you you're not supposed to get a gold star go put a gold go put a gold star up on the wall Christopher like you did a good job you took care of your kids that's what you're supposed to do. You know how tragic it is that the male race is established on y'all being so shitty and ain't shit that when y'all do something that you're supposed to do, it's like roo, 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 roo for him, roo for the dad that drops his kid off at school, roo for the dad who does his little daughter's hair because he knows how to do his daughter's hair. Root for dad that, you know, plays with his kids or stays at home and let mommy go out and let her hair down for a few hours. It's like, oh my God, girl, you found a rare breed. Huh? Like, y'all don't really think about that. Like, y'all's gender is so conditioned to y'all being basically not that good at stuff or ain't shit or that bad. That when you do stuff you're supposed to do, i.e. take care of your kids i.e. provide it's like oh my god as chris said i'm a good man you got a good man savannah <laughs> okay chris whatever but you're still missing the fact that your that your wife is still yearning for more and you understand that but you feel like you ain't got to do the work you want her to be patient okay if she get up and walk out your life She's been telling you a lot of times, you niggas don't understand, your woman has been dropping hints, but because y'all feel like, oh, I'm doing this already, like she ain't going nowhere. That's basically how Chris is feeling. He ain't saying it, but that's, actually he did kind of low-key say that in an episode, real subliminal base. Um, Monique comes in on the workout. She like, man, girl, you, you ain't working nothing. You know, he, he basically, you know, shoot her off like, girl, let me work out. And so he comes in talking about orders and then they talk about her, uh, her, you know, her not for lazy moms thing. And she's like, girl, he's like, she's like, yeah, you know, I ended up seeing Arena and we're going to go to a party. They made it 26 years. And he's like, shoot, you know, we need to step a date with them. You know, I want to definitely know their secrets because, you know, 10 years, like I want to make it further. And it's like, y'all do want to make it further. And it seems like Monique is willing to do the work. But Chris, you're not. You're emotionally unavailable as most men are. And then y'all really try to push the fact of oh i'm financially you know holding up a lot of because he did this on um potomac he was like well you i i you got the money you know you you do it and like you you use the money anyway so use it which is for what you need it for and it's like i don't want to have to hire a nanny i want my husband to to do like want to do these things but for some reason you niggas will take care of y'all kids like Y'all just really feel like y'all shouldn't have to do it. Even though we went 50-50 on this baby. The gender roles? Not not, not it no more. It's, it's not it no more. Like, it's time for y'all to start cooking for yourself. It's time for y'all to start cooking for your kids. It's time for y'all to start taking care of y'all's kids. Like, that just is what it is. Y'all want to sit there and ask for women. Oh, I want her to have her own. I want her, you know, to be, you know, successful on herself. Okay, so she's technically bringing something that y'all consider to be a masculine trait or what a man is supposed to do she has her own job that means she's falling into the masculine role a little bit which means if she's picking up that part ain't it only fair that you pick up some of the house duties i.e cooking and clean tea just saying um so yeah, so they're basically talking about the party and she's like, You're, you know, I definitely want a QA. and a We got to ask them some questions, uh, but they, they, will later, they will later see that, bitch, they ain't trying to talk about it. So we end up moving over to Miss Ashley, you know, Silva. 
they live a nice little lifestyle it's nice and pretty uh but unfortunately she's dealing with the what most women deal with is I'm a married single mom. Yes, I'm married, but I'm literally doing everything on my own. I'm taking care of the kids on my own. I'm handling the household on my own. And my husband's gone all the damn time. Uh, DJ Quicksilver flying around the world. Now, yeah, yeah, DJ for everybody. You come home for maybe one, two days and you fly right back out. Like, and he acknowledges, oh, you know, I work too much, you know, but I want I want to provide this lifestyle for my family. And at some point, you he's starting to do that Marceau shit where it's like, oh you want me to work you don't provide this lifestyle and it's like yeah but you've done enough or you've you know established enough to where you can scale back you're just choosing not to at this point quicksilver i know you can scale back but you're choosing not to and a lot of you men use the work as a scapegoat to not coming home and helping in the home front because you feel like that's not my job. That's what you're supposed to do, right? Silver, you ain't slick. You ain't. I, we know you type of niggas. At least I, I can see it. I know you saved up enough to, to scale your ass back. But you don't want to. You don't. That's just what it is. Um, You want to be able to come home and all this shit be done for you already. And use, oh, I was working as an excuse. Why are you not doing it type shit? So she starts explaining to him, like, you know, I, I want to write my book, but I don't have no time between the kids, practice, you know, getting them ready for school, shopping for them. You know, I, I just don't have enough time to myself. And he's like, you know, I know I can do better. Um, I, I got to address, you know, some things. Um, he keeps using this excuse of, oh, DJing is my coping mechanism. Well, nigga, if you, you got to cope with something, that means there's probably some shit you should address, i.e., Take y'all asses to therapy. What is it about y'all just avoiding therapy and then wanting y'all's women to pick up the emotional baggage? And then y'all be mad and be trying to say, oh, y'all, y'all men need help emotionally too. Y'all don't want to be there for us emotionally. It's not our job to. Like, y'all need to fix that shit on your own. Like, I can help, you know, facilitate and trying to help you feel better, work through your emotions. But when it comes to you handling your triggers, handling your scars, handling your traumas, Take your ass to therapy, <laughs> period. Get a life coach, something. Like the excuses for you men are just, it's getting old, honestly, it's old. Um, And for you, Silva, to be able to acknowledge like, yeah, I know I need to scale back. I know I could be helping more with the kids, i.e., but I don't feel like it. That's, what we're, that's the truth, I don't want to. <laughs> Cause I don't feel like I have to because look, look at what I'm providing you. Look at this lifestyle. Moving on to another one, uh, Mr. Jamie. See, Mr. Jamie, he got a different set of issues I'm realizing and they're starting to reflect in his son. So Miss Arena, she's at home. She got her mama there. When her mama rolled her eyes, she cut them bitches so fucking hard. She said, mama, when's dinner gonna be done? And the mama said, The mama look like the fuck I look like. <laughs> what the fuck I look like? Um. Uh. Uh. Yes, yeah, she like 20, 30 minutes. So her son, I think Jason, uh, he's visually impaired. So the mama does help with that a little bit. Uh, but Arena, she's sitting downstairs with Big Jamie, and she's like, "Well, little Jamie, I know y'all don't like to hear that name." And so the way that she's saying it, that she's like, "Y'all think something's wrong with him?" It's like clearly that there is a negative connotation when it comes to little Jamie. Right, and so she's like, I invited him to the to the party, and he should be there. And the dad's like, Yeah, I believe it when I see it. And so he is able to acknowledge, like, you know, me and my son, we ain't close. You know, we definitely got some things, you know, we need to work on. And the funny part about a lot of these issues, most times with parents and kids, they always want to wait on the kids to reach out to them. You're the parent. So you should take charge in fixing things, especially a man, because if you want to be a leader, that means you should initiate the change. And the fact that he as the dad is not initiating it lets me know that he got some shit going on too, right? Generational trauma, if you can't see it, is right in front of our faces. So um, especially with how he was acting at the party, it definitely let me know where he is at emotionally, um, 
and how unable he is to acknowledge maybe your tough love isn't what your child needs. Um, so Arena goes shopping with her son, car shopping actually, and she basically broke down to him was like, I feel sad. Like, I don't like the fact that you and your dad aren't getting along. You know, I do fear for you sometimes going out in these streets, like hanging around the wrong crowd. Like, am I going to get a, you know, do, 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 knock on the door one day talking about, you know, little Jamie is no longer here. And so she kind of tears up and you can see it affected him a little bit in the sense of like, damn, like, I really don't want my mom concerned about me like that. Um, it's definitely giving... I am going to rebel because I can't find any mentorship in my dad. Like the more your son is rebelling is the more that you should be trying to show him. Like I've been there. Like, let me, let me not criticize you, but let me mentor you. There's, there's two different things. Yeah. You can tell somebody, okay, what you're doing is wrong, but not in a way of like negatively saying, well, this is how you're doing it wrong. You're always doing it wrong. Like you need to do better this way instead of how about you just simply be like, you know what? See, you're doing that way. I can help you maybe find a better conducive way. Or maybe you want to try this way. Maybe this is an option for you. There is a way to worm in constructive criticism and not it be like boom, 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 beat down in your kid. And I can tell homie, you've been beating down in your kid because you said tough love. And you might have got that because, you know, the crack pan pandemic in the 80s or whatever, epidemic in the 80s. But it's like, did it work for you? Yeah, you're successful, but did it really work for you? Are you able to address your emotions? Because it looked like definitely not. And it looked like you got some pent up anger. And I guarantee there are a lot of times your dad did a lot of shit that could be borderline abusive. We know how being raised in a black family is. The shit is low-key abusive. But because, you know, we don't turn out bad, it's like, oh, you know, I appreciate the tough love growing up. And it's like, half of that shit wasn't even necessary. Talking to your kids sometimes is just as effective. Um, but he was like, you know what, I'm going to take the step and I'm going to talk to dad. So, um, um, did we see Miss Winter again? What happened after that? I think it's the party actually yeah so party time everybody's showing up Monique Chris they matching looking good looking fly Quicksilver you know his little miniature self looking good looking fly uh <laughs> winter is petty boots with the fun size okay petty boots um you know he walk in and you know he basically feel like shit I'm five two but my money make me six three like that's what he's giving um, so they walk in, of course, everybody's like, oh, I can't wait for him to come. Like, we're going to ask some questions, you know, like Miss Wanda. Uh, I got a question. <laughs> so, um, Arena and, you know, Jamie walk in, he has his, uh, entertainment business. So him and Quicksilver are familiar with each other, but they walk in. Of course, it's a party, already, already, you know, they sit down and of course, everybody's like, rah, like, how did your marriage work? What's the best way to fix this? How did y'all get through conflict resolution? How did y'all make it so long? And so they're feeling like, and Monique is pushing and pushing. And she says, you know, I am kind of pushing because, you know, I want to make it there. And it's like, girl, I get you want to fix your marriage, but just because they made it that far doesn't mean they actually fix shit. Like a lot of you got to understand, yeah, you married, but do you have a marriage? And I say this all the time. I figured it out being a child of divorce. There's a difference for, between being married and having a marriage. Married simply means we are together because we're choosing not to split because the only thing holding us together is our names that we signed on this dotted line. That's what being married is. Y'all are married. Y'all are together because this paper got both of our names on it. We don't like it here. We're only here together for the kids. We ain't really working in tandem with each other, but damn it, we married because our names are on this dotted line. Then there is having a marriage and a marriage means I'm fully fulfilled in this, in this relationship with you. You're fully fulfilled in this relationship with me. And it's looking like all of y'all is simply just married. Calling it how I see it. Jamie and Arena guarantee all the shit she put up with him. She's put up with more shit from him than he's put up with her. I guarantee that. And it's all—it's most of the time what women deal with. 
you're putting up with shit, especially if you have a, a man of stature. Uh, Y'all like to say a high value man. I'm so sick of hearing that shit. Ooh, y'all y'all little leader, KS, Mr. Samuels, had y'all really feeling yourself, okay? Um, but yeah, they ended up backing up off the questions. Um, so Mr. Little, little Jamie comes in and here's another thing that definitely was telling when the dad was like, oh yeah, it's good he showed up. Uh, uh, I hope he just doesn't do nothing to piss me off. Huh? How are you already like going at him like that? Like, I hope he doesn't do nothing to piss me off. It's like you're looking to find something wrong. Like, why couldn't it just be like, damn, you know, I'm so glad to see my son showed up in point blank period. Why couldn't it have been that? So the son calls him. He was like, you know, look, dad, I understand. You know, I am doing a lot of stuff. I'm using the weed to just, you know, I'm smoking. I'm feeling like it's not affecting me, but I'm realizing it really is, you know. And the dad's like, I see that. You know, you either going to be dead or in prison, but you got to know that we're going to be there for you regardless. Like, we love you. And when the son was like, you know, I, I do need to hear that sometimes. It's like, you can see he just always got negative criticism from his dad. And when you're constantly telling your kid, like, you're doing this wrong, some kids, their fixing is in positive reinforcement instead of negative reinforcement, Mr. Jamie, okay? And your son is yearning for an emotional connection and you can't give it to him because yourself is not emotionally intelligent. You aren't emotionally in touch with yourself. So if you want to fix shit with your son, a lot of people got to realize the stuff that happens with your kids, you first got to start with who the hell was raising them. <laughs> your kid only becomes the way they are through their environment and their parenting. So you got to look in the mirror. Yes, there are some times where kids, you know, fuck up on their own. But as a parent, you do have to try to acknowledge like, what part did I play in this? And Mr. Jamie, sir, I'm seeing a huge goddamn part that you're playing in your son's, you know, out there and just using weed to, to, to numb the pain. But nonetheless, they kind of reconcile for the moment. We'll see how long it lasts. Because I feel like when the son tries to tell the dad how he feels about being a, their, a parent always is going to have a moment of your child telling you their experience of being raised by you. And if you don't like the way it sounds, don't get your feelings hurt because your child is telling you this is what it felt like being raised by you. And a lot of parents don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to hear it. Um, so we end the episode with Chris and Moni. Damn, they're getting into it again because Chris basically tried to shut her down with the I'm sorry. So um, uh, they were like, oh, damn, you know, Raina and Jamie, they weren't trying to get nothing up. You know, they wasn't trying to tell us nothing. And they weren't. Because I can tell they don't address shit because anytime Raina brings it up to Jamie, he ain't talking about it. If he don't want to talk about it, he won't. And he never wants to address anybody else's emotional feelings. I can see it. And I saw, I before I even saw the trailer, I can tell what type of man Jamie is. He's emotionally stunted. Um, But uh, then they get into, she's like, oh shit, I saw Terry. You know, Terry was Chris's life coach. And basically she was like, I'm getting a block with him. And so they were um, tasked with doing this little list. And Chris has yet to complete the damn list. And Monique's like, why don't I have this list yet? Well, I mean, first this is the excuse of, well, I didn't quite understand what you wanted from me. Then it's, well, well, Terry isn't coming. So why do we need, why do we need to do it? And it's like, just because you're having with this life code doesn't mean you should be actively working on it with your, with your wife. Like your wife is telling you, Hey, I need this from you. And you feel like, well, shit, you might need this, but look at everything else. <laughs> look at everything else. I know you need that, but look at everything else. When you do have everything else, it just literally makes it more apparent what you're missing. Like, it makes it more apparent what you don't have. <laughs> but Chris, once again, I'm a good man, Savannah. And so she's like, you need to admit basically that you don't feel like doing it. Did you didn't feel like it was important in that moment? And it's like, oh, you know, you're right, Moni. You know, my bad. I'm sorry. Like, I'm going to just tell you. She's like, no, I'm not looking for an apology. I'm looking for you to express how you felt in not doing this list. Because essentially, in you not doing this list, you're telling me I don't give a damn about it or I don't feel the need to do it or I don't want to do it. Which one is it? Pick one. Take Pick your poison, Chris. Which one is it? 
And a lot of it feels like, uh, one, I don't want to do it. And two, I don't feel the need to do it because look at all this. I'm not like these other men out here. Girl, you got a good man. I ain't out here bringing no babies to the doorstep. Come on now, Chris. And he knows he has to do better, which is even more annoying because he said it multiple times. Yeah, I know me and me and me and Moni ain't, you know, emotionally like where you need to be. So if you can admit that, that means you understand like there's got to be some work done. But he views it as, you know, be patient, you know, work with me. You know, it's worth it. Why is it worth it? You got to ask yourself that. Why does he feel like it's worth it? Because what? Look at all this. <laughs> Look at everything else I've done for you. It's worth it. But that's not what she's asking for. A lot of niggas keep trying to throw money in at the situation. And that's what a lot of times what women aren't looking for. Because I can guarantee I can pick up a job and fix myself financially should the time come. But I'm still looking for something from you. And the fact that you don't want to give it to her simply based because you feel like I ain't like these other niggas out here. That's a problem. You ain't gonna make it further because eventually Monique's gonna get fed the fuck up, okay? Um, and so he basically, I'm, I'm sorry, you right. What else do you want from me? I said, I apologize. I apologize. What else you want from me? And it's like, I don't need the apology. I need you to talk to me. But Chris is another one. He's emotionally stunted. And she doesn't want to have one or two, one, one or two situations. It's either they're going to end up like his parents where it's like, yeah, we're together, but <laughs> we just friends. Like we sleep in separate bedrooms type shit or divorce like her parents at year 20 something because y'all don't want to address shit. Like I'm really wondering how Chris grew up and his dad and his mom, like I want that background. And the fact that Chris can't write, okay, what, what are you passionate about? Who are you? Like, I think Chris knows nothing other than like the man's role, the man's role is to make money, is to provide. Like he can't see, out, he's got blinders on. He can't see outside of that. And so it's like, he just, I don't think he knows essentially who he is. A lot of people, if you ask, who are you? They honestly don't know. Like what makes you happy? Like those things are easy to get distracted from when you have a family, when you have kids. Like, which is why women a lot of the time feel like, who am I besides a mom? Who am I besides a wife? You know, who am I outside of that? A lot of women will have identity issues after that because it's like, well, shit, like, who am I? Like, do I know what I like and what I want to do? Or if you're in a relationship, it's like you get lost in trying to appease your partner, you lose yourself, you know? But that's kind of where the episode ended, you guys. I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Tell me how you feel about Love and Marriage DC. How you feeling about Winter? How you feeling about Ashley? How do you guys see the relationship going with uh, Big Jamie and Lil Jamie? You know, how do you see that going? Um, the preview's looking real good. Looking like there's some cheatations. And if the woman cheated back, <laughs> you nigga probably deserved it. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. I, I will see you guys later. Make sure to follow my Instagram and Twitter. I will catch y'all later. Deuces.